What's up, Battletech fans? Today, we're finally getting around to painting the Gen Con Irby, because, well... I just think they're neat. On the real, though, it's an amusing project and always makes for a fun discussion piece. I'll be using almost all contrast paints or washes for this, with very little of anything else, so I invite painters of all skill levels to follow along and try this one out for yourself. As always, the list of materials you'll need for this is in the video description, so let's get started. I wanted this to be an easy night's work for anyone, so I went with good old Wraithbone spray as my base. Just remember, when spraying, you'll want to keep the miniature at least 6 inches or so away from the spray nozzle and work in short bursts, rather than a continuous spray. I also gave it a very light dusting of Duplicolor Sandable White Auto Primer. Not enough to be noticeable, per se, but just enough to make sure that contrast paint has something to stick to. My favorite way to do the bottom half of this miniature is with my tried-and-true method of what I call grayscaling. Typically, it takes me about three coats of Null Oil to achieve the level of darkness I like when I'm trying to paint something that's supposed to be black. I like the way this highlights the details of the miniature more, I guess. What you'll want to be careful about here is waiting for each coat to dry in between before applying the next. If you don't wait long enough, you'll accidentally rub off an area of shade that was still wet and be left with a huge white spot, usually in a highly visible spot on the miniature. Ask me how I know. You don't want that, neither do I. You can put it in front of a small fan to accelerate the process, just be sure not to place the miniature too close to the fan or have the fan on too high. The air from the fan will change how gravity affects the liquid, so place the mini about 6 inches or so from the fan and have it on the lowest possible setting. Finally, don't worry if you get a little bit of this stuff on the top half of the miniature. You can always paint a thin layer of wraithbone over those areas, and it'll just be our little secret. Now get out your Bastion Gray and add a small amount to the end of a flat, angular dry brush like the one I have here. Wipe most of it off on a paper towel or napkin. You're wanting to have very little coming off the brush on each pass, so do a test on your fingernail or the edge of the hex base to make sure you're not getting too much paint coming off as you work. Apply quick, even strokes and don't worry about being precise. This is not an accuracy game, you're just trying to highlight the raised areas of the mechs where light would be more likely to hit it. This is the part where you'd take your wraith bone and use it to cover up any areas you accidentally got color where you didn't want it. Invariably, I'll wind up getting a little here or there, so it's no biggie. It's why I like to start with the darker colors of the bottom half and work my way up to the lighter ones on the top. It just gives me a lot more freedom and the ability to relax. You'll notice I painted a couple of white stripes on the legs in wraith bone as well. This is so I have the same base to put the red over later and have it be nice and vibrant. I just applied two thin coats with a fine detail brush before I moved on. Now I start with the E end in yellow first and work my way up. This is because, like I say, it's real easy to correct mistakes on the torso with Wraithbone at this stage when there's no other paint on the model. It means you can get the liquid into the crevices you want and not have to sweat the small stuff. This encompasses most of the body, but be as careful as you can. Try to avoid getting any contrast paint on the upper dome areas and a couple of spots on the arms. They're all pretty easy to go around, but you've got Wraithbone as a fixer if you need it. After about 45 minutes or so to dry in between, I'll start working on the Militarum Green next. Now you can really see where the paint goes if you get it somewhere you don't like, and it's easy to wick it away with your brush to keep it from being seen. Work as slow as you need to and coat the upper dome area and the front of the cockpit, and then move on to the back panel of the left arm and the gun barrel on top of the right. If you have any areas that need fixing after the green, don't worry. Wait for it to dry and use your wraith bone, then reapply the contrast paint in a small amount. They blend together pretty seamlessly in my experience if you're only working in small areas with tiny amounts. And finally, because it encompasses such a small amount of the miniature, I go with the Blood Angel's Red last. 
You'll barely even need a drop to cover the stripes on the legs and the upper panels of the right arm, so go easy and you'll still get a nice, vibrant red. Don't forget the left arm weapon port as well. My classic one-two punch for metallics is lead belcher and null oil. As I always say, pick your spots and get to work. The good news here is that on this model, there aren't really a lot of areas that need metallics. Antennae, the gun barrel on the right arm, the vent on the chest, and a few vents on the back are really all I felt was necessary since the weapon port on the left arm is red. Then go ahead and move on to your null oil when you're finished. Give each area a coat at full strength, but be careful not to use too much on the vents or you'll obscure the details. I really only needed one brush load of wash for, I think, all of the metallic areas aside from the gun barrel because they're all so small. Take your time on these small areas though, because this is where it counts. And we're done! I finished the cockpit with Evil Sun Scarlet and Spirit Stone Red. The basing is Astro Granite with Drakenhof Nightshade and Bastion Grey. You can finish these effects however you like. I suggest painting the front hex side a separate color for ease of knowing the mech's front side facing. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like videos like this one, do us a big favor and subscribe. Turn on all notifications so you can find out exactly where Battlebound is going to turn up next. Check out our Patreon to help keep more videos like this one coming for Battletech fans just like you. Thanks again, I'm Tuck Davian, and we'll see you next time right here on the Space Lane. Be sure to smash our like button and subscribe to our channel. Crowdfunding is when lots of people give you small amounts of money to help your passion project come to life.